Hi Richard, thanks for joining us. Uh, today is a historic day for women's cricket in the southeast of England as we unveil the southeast stars. Um, they'll represent the region in the new semi-professional tier of the game. Firstly, for our viewers who may not be fully up to date with the ECB's plans to transform women in girls cricket, can you just give us a brief outline of what the regional setup is and how it will work at first team and academy level? Yeah, cheers Jack. Well, um, as you say, yeah, a, a fairly fairly historic day within the, the women's and girls game. Um, so transforming women's and girls um, cricket is a key priority of the ECB's Inspiring Generations um, strategy running from 2020 to 2024. Um, and uh, England and Wales has been split into to eight regions geographically. Um, and we, uh, being the London and South East region, um, uh, are going to encompass the two counties of, of Surrey uh, and Kent um, and within that regional setup as you said there'll be an elite team and an academy um, in due course. Um, obviously part of this is, is trying to trying to provide some some sort of parity across the country from ECB's perspective on on player development uh, what players can access uh, and, and in, indeed trying to sort of take away an element of that that postcode lottery as as to where there might be st strong um, strong areas uh, in terms of what players can receive it and, and those that don't so um, that's uh, one of the one of the major reasons um, and obviously it's to to significantly professionalize um, women's domestic cricket uh, and, and to really um, really start to, to move the programs forward that players receive at domestic level um, so uh, this, the senior team for the London and South East region will be called the South East Stars um, and as I mentioned, there, there will be an academy that will come online um, towards the back end of the summer into the winter that we call the South East Stars Academy. And um, they will uh, certainly next year play in, in the senior team will play in a 50 over and 20 over competition. Um, what we'll play this year, we'll, we'll obviously wait to find out. And, and that's still taking shape as, uh, as a lot of things are in, in cricket at the moment. Um, so hopefully some, some further announcements on that can come out in due course um, but one of the one of the well, certainly one of the most significant initiatives behind this transforming women's and girls cricket and, and introducing this new elite domestic cricket structure is the aspect of domestic professional contracts and um, allowing players outside of that England central contract list to receive a salary to uh, train as full-time as they possibly can and uh, effectively have a significant amount of support to to follow uh, and chase their ambitions and dreams in the game um, and, and certainly with a, 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 a multitude of, of, of aims from, from the programme but certainly significantly to try and bolster, um, bolster the amount of players that could be uh, in line to play for England in the future. Um, yeah, so as you say there, um, it's about the professional contracts. Um, your first four professional contracts have been agreed at South East Stars. Uh, Bryony Smith and Sophia Dunkley are players you've worked with recently. Um, Alice Davidson Richards and Tash Farron are also highly experienced at domestic level and have played international cricket. Um, what was it that made you want to make these for your first signings? And if you could just sort of delve a bit deeper into how important being a professional cricketer is for players that obviously are chasing that dream of, of regular international call ups. Yeah, sure. Um, I suppose first, but being that we're only two counties, we're, we're quite a small region. Um, however, Kent and, and Surrey certainly are both both proud of their women's programs and and certainly uh, certainly full of talent. So to to have um, four players of the caliber of these four in our region was was um or is a real real bonus. Um, I think firstly I wanted to ensure that the, these first round of professional contracts went to players that. Um, really have ambition to further their game and, and to, um, to to also bring a, a fair amount of professionalism to the programme already. Um, so that they're four outstanding cricketers first and foremost and four outstanding people. Um, I've known I've known all of them for, for, for a while. Obviously, as you say, Brian, and, um, being a homegrown Surrey girl, uh, I've known for, for a long time since she was coming down to EPP sessions. And um, yeah, at the moment, being an England rookie player, it was... Um, yeah, a real opportunity for her to to be able to to do effectively what she does at the moment, but on a much more local level. Um, and um, for Alice and Tash as two homegrown Kent players, uh, 
exactly the same really and um, the, the ability to 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 make cricket their career but in their in their home um in their home place in their home region was 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 again for them a, a, re, a real sort of step into 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 making something special go on for the next few years for, for them as individuals um as you mentioned dunks uh, Sophia would have been part of the Surrey women's team um, this year. Obviously, that's not not come to fruition. But in terms of her association with the Surrey Stars over a number of years, she does feel feel like uh, feel like a Surrey player. Um, albeit, she 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 does certainly owe a great deal of gratitude to Middlesex for her her development over the years. Um, but for for all four of them, it's a real step into. Uh, into into their lives taking taking a good step forwards. Um, they all have different ambitions. Clearly, um, they've all experienced international cricket, and indeed Tash has uh, been a centrally contracted player. So, um, for her, it's it's about yeah continuing her professional journey on a domestic level for the moment. Um, but certainly, the other three being on on the England rookie system, yeah, they'll be they'll be pushing hard to to then make that next step really and put real pressure onto the England central contract list um one one of the key things about this whole allocation um program at the start was that players are able to accept where they want to go so the, the kind of understanding of where they would want to go is, is it was in their court and I'm, I'm really excited that they've all chosen this region um uh, all put their their faith in this region to help their games go forward and help them go forward as individuals so um that's really exciting and uh in due course we'll hopefully have um some support staff come on board uh to to obviously to help deliver their programs and help shape their their development um and, and i think having these fours as our first round of professional contracts i think that that will really attract some some people to want to work with some quality um, so yeah re really excited to see see them kick off in in due course whenever that might be yeah and as you say there um we've not really got a as, as much of a plan at the moment in uh, in domestic women's cricket that uh, covid19 has had such a massive impact on this summer how tough has that been um for you to get as much as possible in place in terms of maybe your squad and obviously you need you need a new kit for the southeast stars there are there's discussion about what what home grounds that the South East Stars can use. Um, how tough has that been when you're unsure of start dates and the conditions that you might be working in? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think listen for for everybody, well, not just in cricket, but in 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 in, in society as a whole. That the last few months have, have been a challenge, and 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 that there's people out there who've had some significant challenges with with uh, with the pandemic. So. Yeah, it's not been ideal, but um, we just got to keep making the best of what we can do. It's it's moving slowly, which is is frustrating because I think everyone coming into these new roles. I started uh, literally a couple of weeks before lockdown came in, so everyone had the real energy to to really get things going and moving. But but obviously it, it can't happen that way. So it has meant there's been been some more time to to get stuck into the aspects that um, yeah are new to me as well. So like you said, the design of kit, design of logos. Um, that's been nice bringing my GCSE art back into the frame um, but but um, more so some, some of the HR aspects as well so understanding what contracts might might look like uh, what we need to do to provide um, the, the, the systems and the, the structure that sits behind this team um, obviously you've got Kent and Surrey involved uh, is a region um, so it's been meeting new people crossing Kent and, and making sure that um, everybody in the right sort of spheres is understanding of what is taking place and what is hopefully going to take place in the future. So um, it's certainly given me some time to, to communicate to people um, as widely as possible within the two counties. And um, I think, yeah, for, for probably more so there, the frustration is, is, is for the players themselves. They, they, they all would have had an excitement, um, whether that's players that are in these positions as full-time contracts or those that are waiting to, to become part of uh, the elite squad. Um, obviously, the whole transforming women's and girls cricket is about the players. It's about the, the, the women and girls involved. So that's probably more of a frustration um, that sits behind all of this, which is we've just not been able to to really deliver too much just yet. But um, we're, we're we're not the only ones, and um, fingers crossed we'll we'll get something going um, by the end of this summer. And finally, really, as you sit here now, having unveiled the new Southeast Stars logo and your first four players. What 
for you would look like success in the short term and the long term? Well, I think success for this summer is getting a, getting a team out on the park and, and, and having some cricket. So, um, yeah, as I said, there's certainly, there's certainly movement uh, there, certainly willing there. It's, it's obviously in, in the hands of, well, not the ECB, it's in the hands of the government, really, in terms of what, what steps continue to be made to, 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 to help that happen. So, but um, I think re realistically, we, we, we are, we'll, be, we'll be a competitive unit this summer, um, regardless of how much preparation we've had, um, simply because the, the amount of talent that sits in the two county squads down here. So looking forward to that. Um, and, um, and yeah, looking forward to, to, um, to, to the first pool being bold of this new elite domestic structure. Uh, long term, I think it's uh, uh, as much, much about the individual players progressing um, as it is about the, the competition and, and the sort of results and outcome of games. Um, we, we desperately want to help these players move through the pathway. So for those that are in, in a position to challenge England, we want to make that happen. Um, for the younger academy players, we want them to, to be really moving forward to challenge those that are in the elite team and, and obviously become um, professionals of the future uh, and, and then finally one of the big things that sits around the program is is the inspiration and, and the attachment to all sort of girls programs and women's and girls programs that sit out there in the region as well so um, supporting Kent and Surrey's um, yeah girls and, and women's initiatives that, that take place to to inspire as many as many of them to um, to become future stars of the future. Great thanks for your time Richard. Pleasure cheers Jack.